Hey guys, Mr. Klein here, and we're starting our next chapter on Ancient Greece. It's the new units where we talk about the Greeks and the Romans and the foundations of classical civilization. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, the Greeks are a very important group of people in Western civilization. We talk about Homer and Socrates and democracy and uh, this is Sparta and the 300 Spartans and Alexander the Great and all of that stuff uh, comes from a Greek civilization. And so, so much of what we based on what we think is civilized and our government and things like that all have to do uh, with ancient Greece. And so it's important to know about how these people lived and stuff in order to understand how we live today. Now the Greeks lived on a rocky mountainous land surrounded by water. And what we consider to be the Greek civilization lives in this area right here. And this is what we call a peninsula, uh, this right here. So it's surrounded by the Ionian, Mediterranean, and Aegean seas. And a peninsula is an area of land that is surrounded by three sides by water. So you have water on three sides. It's not an island, so it's still connected to the land, but there is uh, most of it covered by water. As a result, when you live on a peninsula and you're surrounded by so much water, the idea becomes that the water becomes very important and it becomes for a source of trade and living and things like that. And what made things more difficult for the Greeks was the fact that mountains and not flat lands covered most of Greece. As a result, there wasn't a lot of area for farming uh, in the traditional sense. You have this valley uh, in this plain right here. You have up here in northern Greece. You have these valleys here, here, and along the western coast. But as you can see, most of it is actually just mountains, which makes it difficult to do a lot of farming, have a farming-based civilization. And because the terrain was mountainous and there wasn't a lot of roads to connect between each other, communities were isolated and people created their own governments and ways of life and we'll talk about the Athenian government later on now because the Mediterranean Aegean and Ionian seas were surrounding the Greeks the Greeks became skilled shipbuilders and built ships and traded with other cultures and this is really important too because the Greeks have a tradition or rather the ancient Greeks had a tradition of taking people's ideas and thinking about them and making them part of their own so they didn't just find sources of food uh, to allow their civilization to grow because they lived in such mountainous areas. They also exchanged ideas with other cultures, uh, which led to unique views of the world and stuff that lasted for thousands of years and we still talk about. So let's talk about the ancient Greek civilizations. Now, many ancient cultures settled in Greece, but two early civilizations settled early. The first one were the Minoans, and the second ones were the Mycenaeans, okay? And so the Minoans built an advanced society on the island of Crete. And here's the thing. The island of Crete is this rectangular looking island. And here's all the archaeological sites with the little three circles and a triangle. Uh, but Crete's down here. Uh, so here's the Greek mainland. Crete is down here. And because they lived on an island, obviously, if they wanted to contact anyone other than themselves, they would have to spend a lot of their time at sea. And that's what they did. Now, although Crete's location was excellent for Minoan trade, its geography had its dangers. Uh, and in particular, this area is near some plate boundaries uh, and stuff. And as a result, you have some dangerous uh, geographic features. And what killed the Minoan civilization was a volcanic eruption uh, that flooded much of Greece and, and resulted in huge clouds of ash ruining crops and burying cities. And so about 35, 3600 years ago, there was actually a volcanic eruption at the Greek island of Thera, which is right here, and it's now known as Santorini uh, Island. And this is actually the top of the volcano, uh, and there's cruise ships in here, uh, but uh, what happened was around 1600 BC, this was a single island, and there wasn't any big hole right here. There was just a big mountain. And what happened was the mountain exploded in a volcanic eruption, and the shock wave and the water, the storm surge, the tidal wave, slammed right into Crete, which was where most of the uh, civilization of the Minoans were. And the Minoans were here at Knossos, and 
this is the this is the temple. I'm sorry, the the palace of the Minoan civilization, and this is some uh, this is some repaired and restored areas. And the civilization was devastated here, uh, and thus the Minoan civilization collapses as a result of that. Now. Although they live on what is now Greece, you know, Crete is a part of Greece, and they influence Greek culture greatly uh, through the mythology and stuff like that, historians don't consider the Minoans to be Greek because they don't speak the Greek language, or rather they didn't. Uh, but they still produce things that we would consider ancient Greek, like the, this fresco of uh, bull jumping where a person would run after a charging bull and jump over it and also pottery in the traditional Greek style like this. But because they didn't speak the Greek language, they're not considered Greek. Now, the first people to be considered Greek uh, and speak Greek and be considered Greek are the Mycenaeans. And the Mycenaeans actually lived on the mainland, or Mycenae, uh, up here on the mainland. And unlike the Minoans who sailed across the Mediterranean and created the civilization through trade, kind of like the Phoenicians, uh, the Mycenaeans built fortresses. Uh, which work really well when you're in mountainous areas because they're kind of hard to attack. And the largest which was in Mycenae, which was their capital. And when the, Mycenae, when the Minoan civilization rather collapsed, this allowed the Mycenaeans to take over the island of Crete, which they did, and they invaded, and they became the major traders in the Mediterranean Sea, establishing themselves and pushing forward. And the Mycenaeans would build fortresses, much like this one. This is the Lion Gate uh, in the ruins of Mycenae. You can see the lions right here. And the Mycenaeans kind of took like their fortress idea and then added on to it the Minoan concept of trade. And so what they would do is the Mycenaeans would fight wars. And once they defeated their enemies, they would force them to trade with them. And as a result, of this constant warfare and stuff. His, some historians believe that the ancient Trojan War uh, with Helen of Troy and Achilles and Hector and Agamemnon uh, was a result of this when the Mycenaeans attacked the city of Troy. And just for the record, when we talk about uh, the Trojan War, Troy is actually located here on the eastern coast of Turkey. And during the Trojan War, of course, the, uh, the Greek city-states all sailed across the Aegean and united to attack uh, the Trojans. Now, the Mycenaean civilization themselves fell when invaders from Europe uh, in southern Europe pushed into Greece. And this caused a general collapse in Greek uh, united civilization. And there was a period of warfare and disorder that we called the Dark Age. And this is what we generally we call the Dorian invasion. And so what happened was uh, invaders, according to tradition and history, pushed in from southern Europe and cause a collapse in the Mycenaean civilization and the kind of halfway united uh, city-states kind of collapsed on themselves. And right here, is, here's an example of Mycenaean artwork. It was found in a tomb. Uh, we call it the, the Mask of Ab Agamemnon, uh, which is one of the heroes of the Trojan Wars. It was actually found in the 1870s in a Mycenaean uh, king's tomb. Now, you heard me talk about city-states as a result of the Dark Age. So let me, let's get into this. What are city-states? Now, we call the Greek Dark Age uh, the Dark Age because it's hard to study because there isn't a lot of written records. So it's kind of based on writing afterward. So we don't have a lot of primary sources, if you will. But about 300 years after the Myc Mycenaean civilization crumbled, the Greeks began to set up independent cities. So rather than a big country, you had a city in its surrounding area uh, kind of be its own country, if you will. And so that's what we call a city-state. And the Greek word for the city-state is the polis, uh, which, you know, it sounds like politic or a pole where uh, you take a pole. That's where we get that from. And the rise of the polis is known to historians as the beginning of the Greek golden age. And... Because uh, what happened was the Greeks, because they lived on this mountainous terrain and they were all separated from each other, uh, these people began to consider themselves more more citizens of that city rather than being Greek themselves, even though they all pretty much spoke the same language, had the same religion and stuff like that. And an ancient Greek city, a polis, was usually built around a strong fortress, which is an idea carried over from the Mycenaeans, usually on top of a high hill called an Acropolis. And 
uh, not everyone lived inside the city walls, especially the farmers. And But during the time of war, the women, the children, and the elderly gathered inside the city walls for protection while the men would fight each other. Uh, that... And life in the city, in these uh, Greek city-states, was focused on the agora or the marketplace. And so let's go hop into Google Earth for a minute. And let's uh, zoom out. And let's go to Athens itself. And we'll talk about Athens in the next uh, lesson. And when we talk about an Acropolis, we usually talk about something. And here's a temple, not so much uh, a fortress itself. But this is generally what an Acropolis would be considered. Uh, and this right here, if I go down to three-dimensional view, you would see that Acropolises would be built, and we'll look at the Parthenon in a second, uh, that they would be built on these mountains that would be difficult to get to. And so the Greek city-state would be focused on here. You'd have the You'd have the city with the city walls in the area, and then you'd have the agora in there, but at the top would be the actual fortress itself and on the Acropolis. And this is a Greek temple. Uh, this is the Parthenon. And here we go. This is the western side of it. But you can go in and you can actually take a you can actually take a three-dimensional view of actually take a three-dimensional view of it. And that, let's go ahead and let's do that right here. And we can actually see how these mountains in the Greek city-states uh, dominate the landscape. Because if I zoom out and we look over, this is the city of Athens from this is the city of Athens from the Parthenon up here. Okay, so you see how high and how dominating over the rest of the the city it is, and this is where. This is also in the city you would have your temples, much like this one. Uh, when we talk about the Greek theater, we'll talk about that uh, and the democracy. Uh, and because it was a large open space, people used it for not just trade but also meeting places. So this is the, the agora uh, in the Greek city-state would be where people met and they talked. And it would be kind of like the local Starbucks or something like that, except it would be much more open. Or it would be like a Walmart or a Costco or something like that, where people all got together and they met and they talked. Now, besides providing protection, the Greek city-states gave them an identity. That's what like I just said earlier. People saw themselves not so much as Greeks, but as citizens of an individual city. So they wouldn't call themselves Greek. They would call themselves Athenians, Spartans, Corinthians, Delphinians, things like that. Thessalonians, or Thessalonians rather. And before long, groups of city-states uh, around Greece set up colonies, and they started spreading out and trading with each other. And after a while, once these colonies would become independent, uh, they would become another polis themselves. And because the Greeks were so focused on shipping and trading, you had Greek colonies and Greek civilizations all over the place. Now, many large cities in the Mediterranean basin were actually Greek colonies, including Istanbul, Turkey, Marseille, France, and even Naples, Italy. Uh, and so let's look at this for a second. Now, here's a map. It's a German map. Uh, so if you see the words, they look funny. Uh, the the Mittelmeer is the Mediterranean. The Tyranian Sea is here. The Adriatic. Uh, the This is Asia Minor. The Black Sea, Syria, Egypt, things like that. But if you notice, all of these... All these red boxes were actually Greek uh, colonies. And some of the cities that we talked about that the Greeks initially established as city-states through colonies are actually major cities in their own right today. So if we zoom out, we talked about Istanbul, Turkey. This is right here. This is one of the largest cities in, uh, it's the largest city in Turkey, and it's one of the world's most famous cities. Uh, and we'll talk about it later uh, this year. It used to be known as Constantinople. Uh, Marseille, France, right here. Uh, the largest city in southern France was originally founded as a Greek si uh, colony. And also, also, you, in Naples, Italy, if I zoom up a little bit, there we go. Uh, Naples, Italy, a large city in southern Italy in the boot uh, is actually a Greek colony. So there you go. That's the lesson for this week, uh, that the Greeks or civilization, uh, that their geography kind of 
formed how they lived because there isn't a lot of room for farming uh they had to trade with each other and the early Greek civilization was on Crete with the Minoans. Uh, they influenced mainly through mythology and stuff like that, but they didn't speak the Greek language. And later on, the Mycenaeans were here on the Greek uh, mainland, and they're considered to be the first Greeks because they spoke the language. And uh, because of their in there was an invasion from the north led to the Greek Dark Age. And after that, Greek city-states started to form where people considered themselves residents of a city rather than Greek civilization itself, which had long-term consequences. And because of their focus on ocean trade and stuff like that, colonies were formed with Greek civilization and Greek language and stuff like that, including cities such as Istanbul, Turkey, Marseille, France, and Naples, Italy, even though they're all over the Mediterranean here, here, and here, they all have their roots as in the Greek traders. So what we'll do in the next lesson, we'll talk about Athens and its special place in Western democracy. And as always, if you have any questions, please let me know. And thanks for watching.